any audience, those that are joining us virtually and through the internet. Is this not the day the Lord has made? Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Is this not the day the Lord has made? It is that. Lord, Lord we thank you, Lord. Thank you for one more time being in your presence, oh God, in your yes, house, oh God. Thank you for the time that has been set aside for us to come and meet with you, oh God. Yes. Lord, you are truly welcome in your presence is welcome yes. in this place, yes, oh God. Not only are you welcome in this place, oh God, but you're welcome, oh God, to dwell within us, oh God. We open ourselves up to you, oh God, and we give ourselves to you freely, oh God. It's the most reasonable thing that we can do after all that you have done for us, amen. I thank you, Lord, for everybody standing to their blessed feet. If you stand to your feet at home, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to give God glory, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, all uh, eyes closed and heads bowed. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day, oh God. Thank you for everything that you've done, oh God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God, and allowing us one more time to commune with you, God. Thank you, Lord, because not everybody made it, oh God, but you saw fit, oh God, for each and every one in this place and under the sound of my voice to be here to meet you, oh God, and to give you praise and to give you glory. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this promise. God, we thank you that we are a happy house, oh God. Lord, we thank you. God, that we know the assignment, God, and that we are following and walking, oh God, in your will and in your footsteps, oh God. Lord, we praise you, Lord. Thank you for the grace and the favor that you bestowed upon us this week, oh God. Thank you for the grace and the favor that's coming in the week that's yet to come, oh God. Lord, we ask that you just make a way, oh God. Make a way when there's no way, oh God. Open the doors that need to be open, God, and shut the ones that need to be shut, oh God. We are under open heaven, oh God, and we give you honor and thanks for that, oh God. We open up our hearts, we open up our minds to hear from you today, oh God. We open up our hearts to be pricked by you today, oh God. We ask, oh God, that your word go forth, oh God, and that it doesn't return to you, void, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you cover the man servant of this house, God. Hide him behind the cross, oh God. Hide us behind the cross, oh God, so that when we go forth to do your will, the only thing that is seen is you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for your favor, God. We thank you, God, for placing the leadership in this place. We thank you, oh God, for those who are able to set the example, oh God, those who are willing to sacrifice, oh God, sacrifice their time, oh God, sacrifice their resources, oh God, so that the needs of your people may be met, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for using us, oh God. Thank you for finding us worthy enough, oh God. Help us to continue to dwell in you, oh God. Continue to cleanse us, oh God. Continue to forgive us, oh God. Continue to help us, oh God, to let our light shine, oh God. Help us to be bearers of your light. Help us to be bearers of your word, oh God. Help us to be bearers of your spirit and bearers of your truth, oh God. Lord, right now we ask that you bless the worship, God. We ask that you bless the praise. We ask that you bless the word that goes forth, oh God. We ask that those things meet the needs of your people, oh God. Touch what needs to be touched, oh God. Shed light on what needs that what needs light to be shed on it, oh God. Fix what needs to be fixed, oh God. Rearrange what needs to be rearranged, oh God. And Lord, we will continue to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for it, oh God. And we ask you. And we give you the praise already, oh God, because we know that it is already done. Amen. And your word is said, whatever we ask, oh God, in your son's name, oh God, we can count it.
God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning again. Yes, good morning. All those who are on social media, on the internet and Facebook land, we greet you in the name of Jesus and on behalf of Dr. Ray Johnson. We just thank you for being with us. Um, we declare this morning that there is no reason. Say no reason. No reason to fear. To fear. No reason. No reason to fear.
Yeah. We firmly believe it to be about God first and then me. Yeah, and see, yeah. I, that is very precious. We say this in the walk of the new that can come 2023. This is our hashtag for the year, so be sure to follow us on all of our social media sites for more information on what's happening in the Lord Dominion. Thank you. Here at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. Amen. Our annual theme scripture this year is Matthew 6 and 33, and it reads as such. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, but thanks, <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. shall be added to you. If we have any first time visitors, could you please raise your hand? Our ushers and greeters are coming by to place an information card in your hand. We aren't going to ask them for you to say anything, but just want to bless you and find a means of keeping in touch with you. And on behalf of Bishop and First Lady, we want to welcome you to the Walk of Dominion here at Dominion Knowledge Church Center. Now, would you take a few moments to prepare your type and offering while I read a few announcements? So, this week in the Walk of Dominion, join Bishop for Monday's meal as it gives us more men from today's world. Tomorrow night's theme is safe and sanctified in an unsanitized world. Mm. And don't we know this word is there? Yes, mm. Let's talk about it. So tune in Monday night at 8 p.m. Amen. Now take it to the Lord Tuesday. Now Lady Alice Ash, till it's Tuesday, and this month is spring for So join her on Tuesday at 6 a.m. Now, who's your best sister in Dallas Ash? It's fullness of his grace, and it is uh, Minister Kelly Jennings. Oh, okay. Well, let me let me correct that. <laughs> this thing is fullness of his grace, and this week we'll have Minister who? Kelly Jennings. Kelly Jennings. Okay, so look forward to it. All right. Now, on Wednesday night at 7.30, join Bishop this Wednesday for a special teaching on the power of prayer. Join Bishop in the continued teaching on the power from Passover to Pentecost and its witness. Calling all mothers. Yes. Oh, no, mother. Yes. Hello. Hey. Let hey. me right. hey. say this first. You are important. Amen. 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 Now, join us this weekend for the Mother's Day tea this Saturday morning, May 13th at 11 a.m. Ladies, be sure to wear your favorite hat and invite your mother to join you. I see you, Mother White. I like your hat. <laughs> <laughs> some more. I miss the hats. I miss the hats. I do. I'm serious. Now, and then join us on Sunday morning for Mother's Day. Be sure to invite a woman with you all weekend long. We will hear from our very own First Lady, Alice Ash Johnson, a little bit later with the details. All right, Dominion Harris Kingdom Citizens Class. Let's remember, if you are interested in joining and connecting with Walker Dominion here at Dominion Outreach Worship Center, class is always on the fourth Saturday. If you are interested in joining, see Sister Shelia Wilkerson and Sister Erica Cox to register for the main class. There are virtual options as well, and you can visit us at www.dow.church for more information. So join us Saturday at 10 a.m. right here in the chapel. Now you can follow us on social media, which is Facebook, Dominion Ministries fan page, Walker Dominion group page, Twitter at Dominion Men, Instagram at Dominion Economics. You can subscribe to the Church Weekly Newsletter at www.dow.church forward slash newsletter. This is the church's new email blast, so be sure to whitelist or unspam this email address, admin at dow.church. Now, by show of hands, again, how many of you have received it? Okay, still not enough. We've got to get those numbers up. So be sure to visit Dow.Church to sign up and connect on the email at admin at Dow.Church, and we will have you connected. So at this time, let's receive the First Lady as she comes with some announcements for the Mother's Day weekend here in the Walk of the Mission. <laughs> so next Saturday, yes, 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 please, um, even invite your daughters. So mothers and daughters, you are welcome to come. Uh, young women, welcome to come. It's a mother's tea. Uh, but even if you haven't born physical children, you will play the role of a mother, whether it is biological or not, at some point in your life. Amen? Amen. We have that spirit of nurturing, that characteristic, that, that, um, uh, that part of us that, that wants to nurture and to raise. Amen? Amen. Uh, okay. Um, so next Saturday, what I want you to do is put on your favorite hat. Put on your favorite hat. I don't care if it matches your tennis shoes or not. <laughs> but put on your hat and strut down in there. We're going to have a little photo booth set up for you. Uh, and then we'll do some crafts together and just fellowship and have fun. So Cheryl and Sister Mary have spearheaded it. And I'm excited about what we're going to do. Amen. 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 God bless you.
could stay right up here and let us go ahead and reach out and fellowship. Come on, stand where we read this. Let's a place to begin to just love one another. If you want to put your mask back on, you can do that. If you want to do what kind of love, you can do that. Let's reach out at this time. Love on somebody. Let's reach out to somebody. Let somebody you know you love them in Jesus' name. Come on, let's fellowship even now.
card in the offering envelope. You can give online at www.dow.church forward slash Dominion Giving, or you can text Dom Give to 40691. And our most popular way, which is Cash App, which is dollar sign, Walk of Domin, D O M M I N. And our new way is our Giving by platform at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. Yes. All right. Now, if we can have everyone stand to their feet for our offering protocol, and we'll repeat. Oh. As I give my tithe and offering, as I give my tithe and offering, cheerfully, cheerfully, I'm believing God for. I'm believing God for checks in the mail, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises, bills to decrease, bills to decrease, bills paid off, bills paid off, blessings and increase, blessings and increase. I believe, I believe the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. The Bible says, the Bible says, in Luke six and thirty-eight, in Luke six and thirty-eight, let's read it together. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running it over and according to your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. Amen. Yes, I'm a yes. I declare in the name of Jesus that debt and lack are here and now, dissolved and done away with, forever in my life and in the walk of dominion, and God will gain the streets for a while. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Dear Lord, we come to you and we thank you. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for being here. We thank you for watching over us, Lord Jesus. We ask that you enlarge our territory. We ask that you be here with us. Comfort us. Give us strength to stand under more than we can understand, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and we bless your name from the crown of your head to the bottom of your feet. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Freedom and deliverance is here, amen. Amen. Can you just put your hands together just give God another praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Uh, and again, this is the month of May, Miracle Signs and Wonders. We're going to look at the life of Jesus preparing in between Passover and Pentecost. And before he, but he died, after he had resurrected Lazarus from the grave, he had a communion fellowship at the table and allowed some people who were not part of the household of faith to come to the table. How many of you like me? I'm glad God doesn't discriminate. Yeah. In other words, everybody is welcome at the table of fellowship as a result of who Jesus is. Yes. And so as a result of that, he welcomes everybody to come to the table to have fellowship with him. And in John chapter 20 through verse 26, some Greeks who are Gentiles show up to have fellowship with Jesus as he prepares to make not only him, but the rest of his disciples brand new. Can I read the text of scripture this morning? Amen. John 20 and John 12, verses 20 through 26. This parenthesis says this way on this wise, New King James Version, on the screen behind me. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Tell somebody I'm brand new. I'm brand new. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, or Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Tell somebody I'm brand new. Brand new. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for life eternal. 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. And if anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. I want to read verse 24 in the NLT version on the screen behind me. I call that the break it down version. He says this, I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls, or unless a kernel of wheat is planted into the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest, much Jesus of new lives. Would you look at somebody on your right and your left, help me preach this morning, put on your preacher's voice, and say, neighbor? Neighbor. Come on, say, oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God wants to give you a new, life. a new life. But it, but come it, on, tell them, it, it has, got to die. has got to die. Point at somebody from across the room and say, neighbor, yeah. this month yeah. is your season. Yeah. God's going to give you a brand new life. God's give you a brand new life. But tell them, I don't know what your it is. I don't know what your is. But I do know, but I do know. It's, got to die. it's got to die. Turn around and tell somebody I'm brand new. I'm brand new. I want to talk to you from the subject matter this morning, brand new, brand new, brand new. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for every trial of our life. Thank you for every test of our life. Thank you for every discouragement we've ever had. We thank you for the distress and the dissolutions we've experienced. We thank you for the pruning. We thank you, oh God, for the calamity, crisis, and confusion. Because, Lord, you've been faithful right in the midst of it. We may have lost things, but we have not lost ourselves. And we still got our right minds to worship you. So we thank you for the brand new that's coming upon each and every one of us. But we're not even going to look like what it is that we've been through. Thank you for what you're about to do in our lives. Now hide me in you so that your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Come on, somebody holler out brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. Brand new. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Great morning, Dominionaires. Yeah, welcome to this first Sunday in the month of May. Uh, we are in the month of grace. So all you know it or not, the May happens to be the fifth month. It's the month of grace. And I don't know if you've been tracking and understanding uh, that grace really is God's unmerited favor in our lives. I even got one more for you. Can I push the envelope a little bit further? 
uh, the number five, which means grace, and the number seven, which means God's perfect number of completion. And you happen to be sitting in the house of the Lord on the Lord's day in the fifth month on the seventh day. Here in my life. You don't miss the place to tell this church something like the Lord. But perhaps I can say it a little bit better to somebody. Uh, that you're about to have God's perfect work of grace and favor show up in your life in this moment. I don't know about you, but I'm going to proclaim it for me that God's grace and favor is on my job. His grace and favor is on my home. Anybody hear this morning? His grace and favor is on my spouse. His grace and favor goes in front of me, in front of my enemies. People that not mess with you in this season because God's grace and favor is on you. Between the time of Passover and Pentecost, you're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Pray out in your life. I'm trying to hold myself together and do this work this morning. But God wants somebody to know early on He's getting ready to manifest miracles, signs, and wonders that have been held up in your life for years. You happen to be in the right season, in the right place, in the right time for God to show Himself strong and mighty on your behalf. I mean, your next are about to come right in front of your face because of who God is. And I think to make an announcement that grace and favor is right. Until your it dies. Come on, there are some it's 
place in our lives that have to die in order for us to be who it is that God has called us to be. I got to tell somebody, I want you to feel shame when God blesses you in this new season. Amen. I don't want you to allow people's expectations and their projections based on their assumptions to cause you to cause your stride to walk a little bit less when God blesses you. I want you to be the kind of believer that not necessarily trying to be braggadocious, but you allow the glory to speak for itself. Come on, is there anybody here this morning that's willing to allow the glory of the Lord to speak for itself in your life? If I were in the old church, mother, I would say, I looked at my hands and my hands were do. I looked down at my feet and my feet did too. Because the glory produces a countenance on your life that brings about a change to where you don't look the same. Preach for a little while this morning. When Moses got into the presence of the Lord to receive the, the law, the Ten Commandments, and he came back down to the people, the Bible records that when he came down on the Mount Sinai, that they had to put a veil over his face because the glory shone so bright upon him. By the time God finishes with you in the midst of this Passover, the Pentecost season, there's going to be a glory that comes on your life to where there's going to have to be a veil. God has to cover you because if you let everybody see the glory, like the children of Israel, they may go blind with jealousy and envy because of what God is going to do in your life. Tell somebody I'm praying to. I know you thought I was going to die when you was cussing me out, but I'm brand new. I know you thought that I wasn't going to keep on serving God, but I'm brand new. I know you thought I was going to quit when you left me, but I'm brand new. I know you thought that I was going to tuck my tail in. Trust God anymore because I got fired on the job, but I'm brand new. I know you thought I was going to cuss Jesus out because I lost some loved ones in my life, but the power of the living God has kept my mind to stay on Him. And anybody in here that can testify that I'm brand new, you ought to get to a place where you don't, you're not ashamed about what God's about to do in your life because He's about to get all. When something has to die. Listen to me. This is a kingdom principle. Uh, this is a kingdom view and a biblical principle of new life. Something old must die for something new to live. Yeah. From out of death always comes a newness of life. Listen to the Bible on the screen behind me. It should be of the book of Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Of the book of Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Look at this one all right on the screen behind me real quickly. I want to read this, this particular verse of scripture because it's a very, very familiar one that helps us to come to an understanding of how God produces glory in our lives and, and how things show up brand new. The prophet Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died. Tell somebody, I don't know what your name is, your name. but it's got to die. Not in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Until you're willing to allow it to die, you can't see God. Yeah. Until you're willing to allow it to die, you can't see God. The text it is a sitting on the throne. Look at this. High and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Listen to Isaiah. He says, above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. And with two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. Look at that. And cried to one another saying, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Can I take about 30 seconds and just ask you that for a moment? Whenever you see the Bible talk about the Lord of hosts, it's talking about the God who is the God of all of heaven's armies. In other words, he saw God high and lifted up as a general just waiting to send an angel to show up on your behalf to produce glory in your life. And Isaiah got drunk beside himself and began to say these words as he heard them that the earth is full of his glory. I don't care what happens in your life or what's taking place. 
this. God is going to get glory out of this. Oh, somebody ought to shout through here. God will get glory out of this. Even if he got to send angels on the war path to go fight on your behalf into your new week this week, God is about to get glory out of this. I want you to walk through this week with your shoulders squared, with your chest out, and with your head held high, and to just pat yourself on your chest in the break room and tell somebody, I'm brand new. I don't care what it looks like. Glory is going before me. I have seen the Lord, and he is high and lifted up. Somebody call out brand new. Now let this particular text, Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9, Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9, the glory of this Temple, all the believers should have been running right through there. Shall be greater than the former, says there is the Lord of hosts. Sometimes God sends the army to clear the pathway. To you, it looks like destruction, but to God, He's just clearing stuff up so that His glory can come. Trying to be all together. I just gotta say this to the walk of dominion. What we thought was destruction was really God just clearing the pathway so that his glory can begin to be settled right here in this house. Can I prophesy to you and tell you that the glory that is in this house is gonna be the glory that shows up in your house right in this season of Passover, the Pentecost? Why? Because Jesus showed himself alive with Infallible proofs. Y'all missed a good place to ever tear anybody here but me and you. You should have died when all of that hell happened to you in your life. But look at you today with the glory all on you. You're completely and totally different. Is there anybody in here this morning that can testify and say, God has been gracious enough to allow me to be alive, to give you glory and honor and praise? I'm trying my best to watch my voice. Pushing me right through here. Tell somebody, you should be able to sing the sound right now, but you ain't your right mind. Because God has got glory on your life. As high as you have been out of your mind, you ought to give God glory that you are in your right mind today. Because the glory that is in your life. As many times as you thought about committing suicide, you ought to run. Do something new in your life. Yes, Isaiah 43 and 19. 
on the screen behind me says, Behold, somebody shout, Behold. I do a new thing. Somebody holler now. Now it shall spring forth. I can holler right through there. Somebody say, Behold. Jesus that they're going to see. 
That's why you gotta put your own aside because God's trying to put glory on you to put you on this plan so that somebody can meet the real Jesus. Somebody got a brand new. Now, all too often, church, it's our it that keeps getting in the way. Watch the text with me. This is the NLT version of the text. It says that some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration, celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Cali. Look at what it says. They said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. What we have to understand about the significance of this is that the Passover, listen to me now, is uniquely a Jewish celebration. Remember, it is the celebration of the deliverance of the Jews, the biblical Hebrews, from the oppression of Egypt. And the law of Moses was that they would celebrate and commemorate their deliverance, here it is, with the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost, so that the firstborn son of each house would be spared. Ooh, that is so good right there. In other words, if the blood could deliver them then, the blood can still deliver you now. We keep trying to, listen, I, I, I'm not trying to give no haterade uh, to the current move of mental health and therapy and the time that we are in. Yes, you need to go and talk to somebody. Yes, you need to sit down with somebody and work with the issues of your soul so that your soul will be made well. But there are some things only the blood can do. Strong and proud. There are some things in your life only the blood can handle. Only the blood can get the devil out of your house. Only the blood can protect you from a stray bullet. Only the blood can make the way out of the way. I don't want you to slip up and think you're walk into some Scientology or New Age philosophy behind the church. No, this is a blood believing, Bible believing, blood washed kind of church that believes in the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the kind of church that still believes that the power of God is alive and available and aware for you in every area of your life. So go talk to the therapist, let your go pay on your insurance. What it needs to handle, but by the time you get home, but by the time you got to run the devil out of your house, you will have to act like your grandmama and your granddaddy and walk through the house and say, I plead the blood. There's not anybody in here. See, 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 our young people look at us like we are crazy because we don't talk this kind of, we don't talk to them. And what we keep trying to do is counsel them with the third person of how they want to identify themselves without. Yeah. <laughs> 
had an unblemished lamb. And really the historians record that, 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 that the herbs which would symbolize the bitterness of savory. And then that carol set would symbolize the sweet paste that they would use to make a mortar uh, to set the people free or, or to build the, the castles or the statues or the images up unto those in peril. That God took the elements from those things and aligned it with the blood in order to set people free. In other words, God would use things contemporarily of this time and allow the blood to come alongside that and it will loose you from the bondage that you have in your life. Somebody say, I'm brand new. new. And so with this part of the law that is given to them at the feast, they were told to commemorate their their deliverance from Egypt at this time of year of Passover that we know and celebrate as resurrection in the 50 days between Passover and Pentecost, Jesus began to show forth these miracles so much so in 40 days. And you know it's time to get rid of your it because the it is keeping people from seeing Jesus. And we're in an age and a time where people are not familiar with Jesus, not familiar with the edicts and the decrees and the standards of morality or biblical ethics nor the universality of God's truth. And so since they can't grasp all of that, they look at you. And because they look at you, you gotta put your head to the side. Somebody say, put it to the side. Put it to the side. Put it to the side. See, we're in an age of pluralism and paganism and pervasive egoism, but yet in the midst of all of that, by the time you finish with Scientology, Spiritism, burning your sage, and all of that kind of stuff, you go come back to the fact to realize that it is only power in the name of Jesus. That every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Watch what the scripture says in Philippians to those that are under earth, to those that are on the earth, that Jesus is Lord, to those underneath the earth. You mean Jesus is Lord in the underworld? Jesus is Lord in the underworld. He is Lord down there. I got time to do it. But, but, but I'm going to say to somebody there are some Greeks coming to the feast. Sir. Say what you're saying, preacher. There's some people that don't speak in tongues like you that want to see Jesus. That there are some people who can't sing the songs of Zion like you that want to see Jesus. That there are some people that didn't grow up in church that want to come and they want to see Jesus. There's some people that ain't never been baptized that want to come see Jesus. And in order for them to get to Jesus, you got to be willing to put your issue of your end aside. Somebody say, put it away. Come on, here's the second question. Time getting away from me. History knows. How do I know it's time for my it to die? It's time for my it to die in my life because the so called saved are in search for the real Jesus themselves. Sinners want to see Jesus, but the religious are looking for Jesus too. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I want to be clear. Somebody who already knows. That you know uh, who you have believed that your calling and your election is sure. Look at somebody and say, I'm saved. I'm saved. I shall be saved. Shall be saved. And I'm being saved right I'm now. Saved right Come on, tell somebody, I'm saved. I'm saved. In the end, I shall be saved. And I'm being saved right now. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise right now. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. We have to do away with religion. We got to do away with religion. Yes. Religious dogmatisms of the edicts of men and get back to the Jesus and God of the Bible. Yes, God. When I say the God and Jesus of the Bible, I'm talking about the contextual Jesus that taught the kingdom of God. And they pause and put a pen in that right there. You ought to write that down. That the Reverend said that we got to get back to the contextual Jesus of the Bible that taught the kingdom of God. The contextual Jesus of the Bible that taught the kingdom of God. I'm saying it again for the stream. The contextual Jesus of the Bible mm-hmm. yes. that taught the kingdom of God. See, our time is filled with an unbalanced view of God through Christ. And on the one hand, we want the God of love and forgiveness. But we forget that he is the same God of correction and consequence. We want the God of love and forgiveness. 
But when we're in an age where can't nobody tell us nothing. So, so we don't know nothing about the God of correction and the God of consequence. Sometimes I think we do our young people a disservice because we don't teach to them and talk to them about consequences for their actions. I was just in a dialogue with a theological friend of mine just over the weekend. He and I were messaging, messaging each other and we kept talking about the plight of those of us who are African American and have gone through the 430 years of slavery and come through the years of reconstruction and Jim Crow and gone through the days of Senator Moynihan's great society and come through the 60s and then in the 70s when our families got split up and then the 80s with the crack academic and, and then and the, the drugs and then the Cold War. We've come through all of that kind of stuff. But at some point, we've got to put down our foot down and say, enough is enough. And it's not so much the societal norms or the lack thereof that is causing our families to splinter and to go crazy. It is us buying into a value system that has gotten away. James Weldon Johnson said it like this. Uh, let's, we forget, let's we become drunk with the wine of the world and then we forget you, Lord. In other words, we've gotten to a place where we forgot him who has brought us this long, far on the way. It is by the Lead us get into the light, Lord, we pray. We gotta get back to the place where we hold on to the power of our ancestors who helped us be who we are today. And so with that God, we forget that He is a God of love and mercy, but He is also a God of correction and consequence at the same time. Can I give title for Proverbs 3 and 12? For whom the Lord that loves, He corrects. Just as a father, the son in him whom he delights. Hebrews 12 and 6, for whom the Lord loves, he chases and scourges the son, every son whom he receives. If God can't correct you, then you're not his. I thought this was a shallow church. I had slipped up and came on the wrong side. If God can't correct you, you're not his. Come on. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger that will not follow. Come on. Somebody talk to me this morning. Come on. Can I give the NLT the breaking down version of Hebrews 12? It says, For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Now that's strong language, so I put it on the screen in the message version of the Bible. I put it on the screen in the message version of the Bible in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 6 through 11. Come on, make sure that's up there. I want to make sure, yeah, 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 come on. Yeah, 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 right, right in here, right in here, right in here. I want you to just look at that while I read it all the way through. Hebrews chapter uh, 12 verses 6 through 11. 11, because what God's trying to do is give us an understanding of how it is that we're in balance. Somebody say balance. Yeah. So I'm going to start in verse 4. In this all-out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you. To say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that blood said. So don't feel sorry for yourselves. Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children and that God regards you as his children? Yes, Watch does. what it says. My dear child, don't shrug off God's discipline. Don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. Y'all saying that? And the child he embraces, he corrects. God is educating you that you may that you must never jump out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in is in punishment. Watch it. It's training the normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us, so why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? Amen. 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 Sometimes God takes you through difficult spaces for training so that He can develop the character that in within you so that when you really do worship Him, He don't got to say to you, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Come on, somebody say, I'm brand new. Get to where you're going, Pastor. Watch this in the text. The children, the saved, rather than understanding the assignment to represent Jesus, have to go and find Jesus. 
The Greeks wanted to see Jesus, so they came to Philip and Andrew. And rather speaking like Jesus was speaking, rather talking like Jesus would talk, they had to go and get Jesus themselves. Remember that passage of scripture we did a little while ago, a couple of Sundays ago, about the father who wanted the child to be healed. And he came to his disciples and said, I tried to get my boy healed, but they could not. And Jesus said, bring the boy to me. How many more times is somebody that needs prayer, how many more times you will have to go get the pastor? Somebody gonna to want to understand the scripture and you gotta come get the pastor. All right. But no, no, it's time out for that. No, you got to be the pastor in that moment. All right. You need to be pastor on your job. Yes, you need sir. to be pastor in your house. Yes, you need to be pastor in your community. Yes, That's how somebody is gonna see Jesus. They're gonna see him through you. you but you gotta get your head out the way. You come on, say amen if you can. Amen. Somebody needs a word, but the word down to them has got to come through you. Come You've been walking with a Lord, but now you can lay hands. Sure. Come on, say it then again. Amen. Yeah, the hour is late, and the saved and the sinners both want to see Jesus. Can I get the last one to land the plane this morning in the message? We know it's our time for our gifts to die because the signs of the times in the world are pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, I said the signs of the times in the world are pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Listen, this is a critical moment in the text of the scripture because Jesus understood that his assignment was not just to the house of Israel. Can I give the NLT version? It should be on the screen behind me. Y'all are right, y'all still here. Don't put the brakes on me, man. We're going to shout at you in a couple of more minutes. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> verse of scripture here says in NLT, verse 23 and 24. Now the time has come, Jesus responded, for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat, God help me through you, is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. <laughs> John 10 and 16, Jesus said, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. They will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Wow. Yeah. Come on, come on, the Apostle John, First John 2 and 17. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. See, the Greeks at the table is a sign that Jesus must die to bring back whole lot of fruit. And I want to suggest to you, not even parenthetically or quick right through here, but as a matter of a fact, that there are things in your life that had to die for others to come to Jesus. In other words, God is going to use your testimony and get glory out of your story that's going to be yielded to him. Because some is about to come to Jesus because they can't believe that you made it through what it is that you made it through. And because of that, that's a good place for you to give the Lord some glory. And all of this work for anything that God's about to start working in my life. That's why I'm brand new. Come on, God. Jump back the last week one more time and then we're going to hold up. Time to say, I ain't going to believe unless I see the stars in his hand unless I see the stars in his side and Thomas wasn't present oh, Jesus wasn't present when Thomas said that and in John 20 and 21 Jesus just showed up in the room he didn't even trust nobody can he? he just showed up in the room and walked straight up to Thomas and said put your finger right here in my side Put your finger right here in my hand. I'm trying to quit. It is me. What you say? 
difference. This month between Passover and Pentecost, God's about to show up right in your space and say, just what you thought, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do in your life. This is me, and I'm making you brand new. Will somebody give the Lord a praise right now? Come on, stand on your feet, stand on your feet. We got to go home. 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 But the issue, the issue, somebody say the issue. The issue is your it is in the way, keeping you from becoming brand new. For some people, your it is putting your mouth on other people. Wow. For somebody, your it is the alcoholism and the addiction issues of your life. For somebody else, your it is you keep trying to run to a man or a, or a woman and thinking that sexual connection is going to solve the issue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's better for you to be by yourself yeah. than to get connected in with the wrong person. That's right. But the drive that you feel like you just need somebody, that's your it. Look at somebody and say, kill it. Kill it. Yeah, yeah kill it. For somebody else, your attitude and perspective, that's the it in your life. Yeah. And if you will let it die, God will live in and in through you. Yeah. So I came this morning to yeah, tell you that you get ready to pray brand new, but there's an it that's got to die first. Yeah. And I just came to be your partner this morning right. to help you get to your deathbed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just came to be the grim grim, if you will, to help you get to your deathbed. I came to be the person to help you pick up your cross and make your way down the Via Della Rosa to God off the hill. Mm -hmm. To go ahead on and die. Look at somebody and say, go ahead on and die. Yeah. I know we started out shouting at this message. I still got to shout at me right through here because I understand the end of the story. Mm. Hallelujah. I understand and understand and know that if you just go ahead on and die, if you go ahead on and be that lamb that is led to the slaughter, Sir. I understand what Galatians 2 and 20 says. Paul said, for I've been crucified with Christ. It's nevertheless, it's that I that lives, but it is Christ that lives in me. So in the life I now live with the six for the income, with the life that I now live with the new who, the life that I now live with the new job and the yes, new house, yes, the sir. life that I do now live with the new access of opportunity, with the life I now live with the new business, yes, with the life that I now live with my name's written in the last book of life, with the life that I now live with new anointing and new joy and new grace. Yes. But it is Christ who lives in me. Yes. But not until your head dies. Yes, sir. I want to help somebody get to their deathbed this morning. Yes. Because the new life is getting yes. ready to come yes. out of the experience yes. of you in your deathbed moment. Yes, Lord. And if you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, this is a this, this was a I shouted and I cried in the same word. I shouted and I cried in the same word. Yes. But I'm willing to die. Yes. If that's you, I want to pray for you this morning that the anointing will keep you in the transformation process. Yes, God. If that's you, some of you, I can pray for you at your seat. Yes. Others of you, I need you to make your way to this altar right where I am. Yes. And to say, Reverend, that's me. I got some areas I got to die in. Help me. If that's you, come on, make your way here. Come on, I'm praying for you. Come on, if that's you, make your way here. Come on, I get this out of the way. Come on, that's you say, I'm making my way here. I know I got to die this morning. Come on, just stand up. Come on, move this out of the way. Just stand right in front of you. That's you. Come on, I got to make my way here. I got some areas of some spaces. I got to die in my life. Richard, I know you're talking to me. Come on, I want you to just start lifting your hands right now. I want you to start praying. Come on, there's some others of you. I'm going to just stand right here and wait. There's some others of you. I got to die. Come on, I got to die. I got to die. This is why I gotta die. Yeah. Come on, I'm just saying what I'm telling you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, God. You, you keep prophetically saying, well, why don't we just call out what the issue is? Because I ain't gonna try and embarrass you. The devil ain't getting there. Come on, that's you. I'm praying for you right here at this altar this morning. Areas in my life I gotta die. Yes, God. 
You keep saying, is that me, Lord? No, 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 that's you. No, 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 that's God, that's you. He's talking to you, give me that, give me that. To the person he just said, give me that, you need to make your way to this hall. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, that as you do the miracle work of power in their life, God, 
of you will make them up on fire for you. Yes, Hallelujah. God, that that same group of people, God, they will be able to go back to them and say, look what the Lord has done. I thank you for new job opportunities, new housing opportunities. I thank you for complete total transformation. I thank you for the head of this household. And may God by your spirit and going to use him for your glory. That you're going to do something different out of the story. And you're going to use him for your glory. In the name of Jesus. And you'll have to say, this had to be the Lord.
go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Go on to the tour. Start at the very top. One, two, three. I believe in heaven's brand new for me. Go ahead. I will allow the work of salvation to sanctify me. I will allow the work of salvation to sanitize me. I will allow the work of salvation to keep me safe. Now, how about that third one that she might get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will allow the work of salvation to keep me safe. I am not going to jail behind somebody else. Can I wait?